<laughs> that is actually harder than it looked. It is hard to see these little sights while watching through a camera viewfinder, even with a high-powered set of readers. I do have three rounds left in here. I'll go ahead and get rid of those. Then we can get this video rolling about the kel P32. Alright, let's get this video officially started. Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here, and welcome back to the range. Today we're taking a look at my kel P32. This is a semi-automatic micro-sized pistol chambered for the 32 ACP cartridge. Has a standard capacity of 7 plus 1. It does ship with one of these 7 round magazines. I wish it came with at least two of them, but it just comes with one. Now you can get the 10 round magazines from kel or from aftermarket suppliers, but they do increase the grip length of the pistol. So if I was going to carry it with a 10 round magazine in it, I'd just buy a bigger pistol, just to be honest with you. Now I might pick me up one of those 10 round magazines to carry as my spare magazine. And this little gun is clear. I'll show you that. kel advertises this as a double action only, although it's not a true double action. You can see the hammer right there. When I pull the trigger, you can see that it finishes cocking the hammer and drops it all the way. Now you can't see it. So it's now it's all the way fell. So when the slide cycles, it does partially cock the hammer. So again, not what I would call a true double action in the sense of the way you would think of a double action revolver or something. So you see when the slide cycles, now you can see the hammer again. It is partially cocked. The trigger will do the rest of the job for you. And there's no second strike capabilities with this pistol. The trigger is advertised by kel to be five pounds. Now, with my scale, I get a little more than that. I get about 6.8 pounds, and that's about what I get on average with multiple pulls. Now, I don't mind the heavier trigger pull on this little pistol. It doesn't have a manual safety on it, and it relies on that long, heavy trigger pull to help make it safe to carry. It doesn't have a manual slide lock. It does have a last shot hold open or internal slide catch. So if you've got a empty magazine or if your magazine runs empty, it will lock the slide back. Or if you just want to manually lock the slide back, you can insert the empty magazine, lock the slide back like I just did. If you want to drop the slide, you'll just drop your magazine and rack it again and it'll go forward has a steel slide, steel barrel, has an aluminum internal frame that houses all your fire control components, and of course a polymer grip frame. kel advertises this little pistol to be about seven ounces unloaded. So my little scale shows it at just a touch over eight ounces with the unloaded magazine. Loaded up with eight rounds of ammunition, I'm getting about 10.1 ounces. Loaded up with eight rounds of ammunition and with my pocket holster, it's coming in at about 10.8 ounces. So that's a complete carry rig fully loaded at under 11 ounces. That's pretty incredible and it's part of what makes this little pistol such an attractive choice for concealed carry or, or a backup gun or something like that. It's just so lightweight, so small and easy to carry. But this little pistol utilizes the Browning short recoil mode of operation which utilizes a locked breech and tilting barrel. Whereas a lot of your 32 ACP, especially back when this little pistol first came out, which hard to believe we're closing in on a quarter century of having these little P32s now. But back then and even now, a lot of your 32 ACPs are straight blowback designs. Though they can be, a, you know, pretty small little pistols, they're usually chunky, clunky little pistols that feel like a brick in your pocket. So this really was an innovative little pistol back when it first came out. The sights on this little pistol are what I would call the bare minimum. I can use them. I made a video showing how far away I can shoot this thing and still make hits. I'll link that in the description below. I actually made it out a pretty long ways using these sights, but I couldn't imagine 
trying to use these in low light conditions or something like that. But I think most people would tell you that this is more of a point shooting pistol anyway. It's something you're going to use up close and you're probably not going to be looking for those sights. But I'm going to shoot here at five yards and see what kind of group I get there on that A in the middle of that target. And I am going to use the sights. So as you can see, these sights do favor right and low, as I explained in that previous video. They just aren't calibrated dead center. But in a self-defense situation up close like this, uh, it's not going to be an issue. It was only an issue when I tried to stretch it out, and at 20, 25 yards, it does become an issue to where I was having to hold way high and way left of the target. All right, we'll take a close-up look of those sights. You can see the front sight is just the faintest nub there. And the rear sight is not much to look at either. The sights are barely existent. That's why I called them the bare minimum. Got some pretty nice stippling, nice sharp stippling on the side panels. But I'd rather see it on the front and rear straps there. The side panels don't do a whole lot as far as my grip goes on holding on to this little gun. Not that it's very snappy. It's the 32 ACP, so even in a gun this light, it's very manageable. You take a 380 this size, like the kel P380 or the Ruger LCP, something ultra light like this, and it can be quite snappy. The 32 ACP is not. That's one of the advantages of shooting 32 ACP. Of course, the other is it's a slimmer, more narrow cartridge, so you get an extra round over the 380 in the same size magazine. Now, if you've got an early model P32, you may have noticed some differences. From 99 to 05, it had more of a triangular shaped front sight rather than the flat on top like this one. And you didn't have this big screw on extractor spring here from 05 to present and this is a present day pistol i just picked this one up a few months ago here in 2023 so this represents the 05 to present day or second gen pistol I've got one in the chamber and the magazine is full with seven rounds, so eight rounds total. All right, we are clear. I like to double check whenever I've got ammunition on the table like this, but I want to talk real briefly about rim lock. If you've done any research on the Keltec P32, you've probably heard the term or read the term rim lock. So I want to explain just briefly what that is. I'm going to set this to the side. So if we're going to talk about rim lock, we have to take a look at the 32 ACP cartridge. It, ha it is what they call a semi-rimmed cartridge. The rim here sticks out beyond the case so if a round above the round below it in your magazine if the rim gets behind the rim below it it results in what they call a rim lock if my thumb here my left thumb if it were the slide and i'm coming to push that next round into the chamber you can see those rims overlap and they're locked there's just there's no way you're gonna it's a terrible malfunction because it's not going to go and you're not going to be able to clear it a tap rack is not going to work you're going to have to drop your magazine put a new magazine in or worst case pull your old magazine apart try to reload it and reinsert it so it's a terrible malfunction that can get you killed so what causes it 
Well, I've I've watched a few videos where guys say that they do it when they're loading their magazines. They'll accidentally put a round above with the rim behind the round below it. And that can happen, but it's easily preventable. Just watch what you're doing and load your mags so that the rims don't overlap. But that's not the primary cause of rim lock. Rim lock occurs when under recoil, the gun wants to jump backwards. The cartridges want to stay where they're at, just the laws of physics. So they end up slamming into the front of the magazine on the inside. And that's when rim lock can occur. You've shot a round off the top, you've got less pressure holding the, holding the rounds vertical, so there's some play there. And then under recoil, they can actually jump rims in here. It, it's not a common malfunction, but it's a deadly malfunction. So how can you prevent it? Well, the easiest way is to shoot 32 ACP ammunition with a long overall length. You can see this is the PMC bronze, uh, what is that, 71 grain FMJ, and it fills the magazine pretty well. The front of that bullet almost touches the magazine, so there's no room in here, even if, they, if, if a couple of these rounds slam forward into the front of the magazine, there's no room for them to jump the rim below them, so you've eliminated the risk of rim lock by doing that. Take a bullet with a shorter overall length, like this buffalo bore here. This is a 75 grain hard cast with a flat nose. But look how much room there is in that magazine. That's a lot of room for these bullets to slam forward and, and one or another to become rim locked. So your chances of having a rim lock are much higher with this ammunition than it would be with something with a longer overall length. And people blame hollow points. I actually, I've had one rim lock malfunction with this little pistol, and I actually got it on video, and it was in that video I've already mentioned. It's linked in the description of this one. It was shooting PMC bronze hollow points, which have a little shorter overall length than the full metal jacket. And I got a lot of comments blaming the hollow point. It's not the hollow point, guys. It's the overall length. It just so happens that most hollow points are loaded to a shorter overall length. So what can you do to prevent it? Shoot the long overall length cartridge. Uh, Fiocchi has a good reputation for, uh, for their full metal jackets. I haven't had any issues at all with this one, this PMC bronze. Or you can put spacers in your magazine and fill up that dead space if you're dead set on shooting hollow points or shooter or shorter, excuse me, overall length ammunition. Keltec actually used to sell a kit for the P32. It was a P32 hollow point magazine kit. So you could put that spacer in your magazine and it would take up the extra room and you could run your hollow points in it without fear of uh, getting a rim lock. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to carry FMJs because for me, these smaller calibers, like 32 ACP, penetration is king. I don't, I don't really, I don't really want to shoot a hollow point in it. I don't, it, the expansion is just going to, if you, if you even achieve expansion, it's just going to reduce your penetration. And with these smaller cartridges, to me, and I'm not telling anybody out there what to do. I get accused of that a lot, and I am not. I'm just telling you guys what I do. For me. I'm just going to carry the FMJs. <laughs> Alright, I want to shoot that same target that I shot at 5 yards at 25 yards and show you guys what I'm talking about, about the sights not being calibrated. I'm going to have my exact same point of aim, but this time you'll notice the shift farther down and to the right.
same point of aim. So that was at five yards, and then down here was at 25 yards. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can see I'm hitting way low and a little more to the right. And that's why I was having such a hard time figuring out where to hold when I done that a man's got to know his limitations video. The farther I get away from the target, the more the sighting error is multiplied. Keltec is known for bringing new and innovative designs to the firearms market, and this one has really stood the test of time. Been around since 1999, still one of, if not the lightest, slimmest little concealed carry pocket pistols that you can get. And I'd say it's been one of the most influential pistols as far as driving that uh, concealed carry market smaller and smaller over the last 20, 25 years so since it came out. It's just been the... Uh, of course, it's been copied. If you've seen a Ruger LCP, you've seen the influence of the kel P32. There's no doubt about that. But that's really about all I had to cover today. I think I covered everything I wanted to. Uh, you guys always remember, if anybody asks you to give up a little of your freedom for the greater good, that freedom is the greater good. And here's the part where I normally close the video out with some banjo music. But I'm ending today's video with a moment of silence for a friend of mine, the man who named me Buffalo. He gave me the nickname of Buffalo back, I guess, about 14 years ago. And it just stuck, and uh, everybody calls me Buffalo. Now, I think my wife is the only one who still calls me Jason. But uh, So here's a moment of silence for my friend. We called him Frog. His name was Daryl Jesse. Thank you guys for watching.